Something I noticed that a lot of my students do when they're creating their microblading strokes is they tend to start all of their strokes with their blade. So notice where my blade is, with their blade pointing up. In the last video, we talked about the importance of hitting the skin at a 90 degree angle by applying that thumb roll. So if you didn't see that one, check out that video first and then come back here because in this video, we're gonna go over the importance of the direction of your blade. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Christy and I'm the owner of Boss Brows. I've been in the industry for 13 years now, specializing in microblading and microblading training. I have tons of videos on YouTube that will help you step up your brow game so that you can become the brow boss that you've dreamed of. If you're looking for a more focused, outlined curriculum, we also offer an online microblading training course where I'll work with you one-on-one -on, -one on all of the things you need to know in order to become a microblading artist. The problem is we want our strokes to mimic hair growth. And traditionally hair growth is going to move up and over and then over and down or over and out. A super easy way to fix this is pay attention to the direction of your blade. I can't stress enough how important this is. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. When I go to make my first strokes, because of where I want my stroke to go, my blade is pointing straight up and down, okay? Just for that first stroke. Now, for my second stroke, I'm going to change the direction so that my blade, instead of going straight up and down, is slantly tilted this way. So it's now coming this way. The reason why I move it that way is of where I want my stroke to end up. So see how my stroke ended pointing that direction? It would have been a lot harder to create that if my blade was going this way. I would have had to force a super round curve in my stroke or I would have ended up tipping my blade resulting in a double stroke. What I see a lot is strokes all pointing up which makes it harder to create fluid strokes that properly reflect the hair growth of the client. Change the direction of your blade with each stroke so that your strokes are flowing in the right direction. The spine is what represents the change in direction of hair growth so I'm drawing that in to show you where your stroke should be pointing. In this example, you can see how the direction of the blade never changed. The blade started in the same direction every time, up. Instead, use the spine as your guide and with each stroke, change the direction of your blade slightly so that your blade is pointing toward the spine before you make the stroke, instead of straight up. It will be easier to create a clean stroke that properly represents the direction of hair growth without having to force it with an over curved stroke. The arrows represent the direction your blade should be pointing in order to achieve proper stroke placement. Now notice how the arrows slightly change direction. This will create a smooth and fluid transition between different groups of strokes. Throughout all of your strokes, always pay attention to not just where you are starting your stroke, but where is it that you want your stroke to go? Again, the direction that your blade starts at is crucial to where your blade is going to end, especially if we're only making a one o'clock curve. Again, see right here, my blade is going this way. I am not starting it this way. What really separates beginner's work to advanced microbladers is the flow of their eyebrow. I like to also say the spine of their eyebrow, but that kind of goes hand in hand. If you understand where the spine is, that means you understand the flow of your eyebrow or the separation of hair growth. So like I said, in the beginning of the brow or at the head of the brow, it's moving up and over. And as you get to the tail, it's moving over and down or over and out. I do find that when it comes to these yellow strokes right here, and the yellows are just another portion of the frame, 
people struggle with these because again, they're always thinking of their blade facing this way. The direction of their blade is wrong. So it's a super easy fix. Change the direction of your blade. Think about where you want your stroke to go. Where is it going to be pointing? So in this case, my stroke is pointing this way. So my blade should almost be pointing that way. Our strokes are only about a one o'clock curve. At the top of my eyebrow, I have my orange strokes. So this is also gonna create the frame of my eyebrow. Now right here, I like to start my blade on that brow mapping. So see this brow outline? I'm gonna start my blade on that brow mapping, but I want it to come off that line just a little bit. So I'm going to curve my tool. However, the closer I get to the upper arch, the less my blade is going to be hugging that line. I have more videos on this explaining what it means to hug the line, so you can check that out if you want to. But again, it just goes back to the direction of my blade. If I keep my blade perfectly on that line, what I'm going to end up with is going to look more like stitches, like this, instead of a natural looking eyebrow. So pay attention to the direction of your blade, where you want your stroke to go. And that is where your blade should start. Same thing goes with staircases. If I'm going to create a staircase, so a staircase is basically just taking a couple strokes and grouping them together. So if I want my strokes to connect, I need to pay attention to the direction of my blade. So a lot of times what I see is something kind of like this. And the reason why they're not connecting is because of the direction of the blade when it started. So I was here and on this one I was here. Notice how my blade is pointing this way. So that's the way it's gonna go. If I want those strokes to connect, my blade needs to drastically change positions. It needs to come this way so that it's pointing in toward the tip of that stroke before it so that I can get it to connect. So always paying attention to where you want your stroke to end and what that means or what that looks like when it comes to where your blade needs to be pointing. So, something that's super easy to fix, but it's definitely gonna improve the look of your eyebrow. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to see more videos like this.